Welcome to the Jerry Graves channel. This is the channel talks about narcissists. I want to go ahead and jump straight into the topic. But first, make sure you leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. Let's jump into it. All right, so how does a narcissist meditate? Now, a lot of people think that narcissists don't meditate, but narcissists do, all narcissists do this one meditation. It's basically they find somebody who is weak, who's dependent and codependent on them, who is missing something in their life. You know, they don't have friends, they don't have a family, they don't have something. And they'll, so this person will take an unlimited amount of abuse. And the thing is, is that really quick, it's not necessarily as weak as what most people describe it as, like being that type of person that I just described, because it's not just that you just are so insecure that you need friends. It's the world is so messed up. The world is so messed up. There's so much evil on the planet and so many people doing bad things that it's like you fear what will happen to you if you don't have people in your corner. So you, you really go far and it's both. Like there's a lot of just insecurity. Like you, you, have low self-esteem and you you want to have people around you and and things like that it's society teaching you that you're supposed to have friends and you're supposed to have uh this wonderful family and it not really being that way and it's also that you just it's out of fear people fear being alone not because they're they're scared of being lonely it's it's some people are scared of being lonely, but it's also all of these things can be true at, at one time. It's also that it's dangerous out here. So, it, you know, it, it kicks in your mind the same way it would back in the African plains when we were first come made on the planet to have a tribe have you can't survive alone like that's in the back of your mind and the world is animalistic and it's almost a jungle out here. It resembles everything that your your ancestors face. Now, if you talk about that, like most people say that, well, we re respond how our ancestors did, but our, our lives are so much different. Like just a dead meeting, a deadline can make it feel like you're being chased by a lion in the jungle. But in reality, it's really the jungle out here. Because people think like animals and they hunt other people. You're not getting hunted by animals, but you can be hunted by another person. And that didn't use it. It couldn't have been as prevalent back then as it, as it is now. So you do have these types of fears that are actually legitimate. So don't look down on yourself if you if you have this right but so they find people like this and then you they end up basically bullying them and they know that this person out of fear this is the main thing the all the other things the insecurity all the other things can be overtaken you know you can overcome that but the fear is what keeps people there the fear of nobody having their back when they really need it um that's what keeps people uh, coming back to the narcissist, right? And that's something that most people don't talk about, but that's like a main driving force. We do most of the things out of fear, not out of uh, some, some sense of lack. It's, it's straight in your face, literal fear that literally makes sense, that makes you do sort of most of your actions, especially if they are detrimental to you. So they have a person who fears being alone because they know the world's dangerous so then they keep coming back and they keep kicking that person around and it's a meditation for them because the narcissist knows and they've been ganged up on before that's this is the reason why they don't act the same way with everybody not just because they're they're like Debo oh we don't act like that or with the people around the block but they've literally they've been ganged up on because they know that they can't control themselves they're toxic and they know that if they they're just themselves around people just by being themselves and not really thinking about it, everybody's all of a sudden going to surround them. So 
their fix for that is to find somebody that they can just take all of their stress out on, all the, the negative energy, and have them as a cathartic release point so that they can be normal or somewhat close to normal, actually above normal. They act like a, an angel around these other people, just this beacon of, of hope and, and positivity. Funny, charismatic, all these things, it's easier for them to be that now that they've got it all out of their system. Their, positive, their negativity is all drained out on you. And they can even look past the faults of other people and they just kiss their butts. You know, if there's somebody more powerful than them, they're just going to kiss their, their, their ass and, and accept some of the, the crap because most people are also toxic. Even if they aren't as toxic as a narcissist is, they're toxic. They're going to put out some toxins themselves and the narcissist can deal with that as long as they have you as a punching bag. And it's like literally a meditation for them. It's like a cathartic meditation. And that's what they have you around for partly. It's not just to it's not just to get supply from you. It's to so they, they can act normally or put on a, a, a fake front in front of the rest of the world. And that's the reason why if you are having your social your social circle taken over by a narcissist, one of the main things that you can do is just pull yourself out of it. Instead of keep trying to be included and, and trying to put patch things up, you just pull yourself back. This is how you take away a narcissist's meditation. You know, they need you to be normal, to act normal. If you can pull yourself out at the right time and you don't care, you show that everybody, I don't care. Even if the narcissist, what the first thing they're going to do is criticize you for that. Oh, he don't care about us, blah, blah, blah. He, they're going to whine about it. But as soon as they, sh they see that you don't care even about the shaming that they're going to give you, they're going to be, because they're going to be hot. They're going to be madder than even your other friends. And as soon as they, they, they start having that, next thing you know, they start to be themselves around the people that thought that they were so great, your, your old friends. And they everybody will see especially if you do it impromptu if you're not you don't have a huge fight you just do it you know and make sure that you know you you don't really make a big deal out of it and next thing you know you'll you'll eventually have your old friends coming back to you complaining about this narcissist and then you you uh slowly exclude and quarantine them and you're back in the game it's time to ball again This is what we do here. We study narcissists, we study toxic people, and then we systematically take what they do best apart. You want to make sure everything is going against them. Their own nature is going against them. If they're using you to prop themselves up, you pull back. And it'll be hard, you know, you want to be around your friends. You don't like to see somebody who is being more like than you, especially if you know that they're evil. But this goes to show you, though, this is something that's very important, is that you, if, if you actually fix your flaws, if you actually pay attention to where you're weak, you can have the same effect that the narcissist has. You can have the same effect as them. And that's something that you should work on yourself. Have a routine to get out your your negative energy everybody has it you know but don't pick on somebody to do it this is more of a self-improvement thing and you'll have more influence over your life and people will be more attracted to you and, and be around you more you know the, part of the problem the reason why they're able to turn people against you is because they do hold back their their negativity but you're being a more rounded person. So you have negative moments with your, your friends, people that you care about. And you kind of want to limit those. You know, nobody's going to be perfect, but you, you limit those by getting it out and learning about yourself and learning, you know, what are your hot spots and, and things like that. Because you want to move towards being the best you that you can be and try to perfect who you are. You know, you don't have to be perfect in the, in, a, in a sense of, 
in a negative sense, you know, you're, you're trying to be the perfect person. Nobody's going to be completely perfect, but you try to be as close to perfect as possible. What lets them in the door is the fact that you're codependent, but what keeps them in your house is the fact that you have flaws. And that's what makes it where your friends turn against you so easily. If you are the type of person that is, are, if you're easily irritated or something like that, that can leave the door open to people coming in and just doing all types of stuff in your life, wreaking havoc. So you don't, you don't sit around and think that, oh, it's not a big deal. I'm perfect the way I am, you know, and take the, I guess the Christ approach. Like, ah, uh, you know, God made me perfect. So, you know, and God knows my heart. No, you work on your flaws. That's why it's important. Or people are going to be able to come into your life at any given point when you have everything in together and start just turning people against you, <laughs> you know, and that's just kind of how it goes. Um, you want to be strong from the point of not being dependent and strong from the point of like being a diamond. The more flawless a diamond and the, the more flawless a diamond is, the stronger it is, less impurities it has. You don't want to have flaws. Work on your flaws. Don't pretend to not have flaws like the narcissist does. But you see, the more flawless a person appears to be, the more power they have socially, the more influence they have, the more enamored people are with you. You want to actually not have flaws. You want to actually really work on your flaws so that you can really have the same effect and people can't corrupt anything around you. You're too flawless. And that's the video for today. Hopefully... This will give you more power in your life. Thank you for watching. Peace. Make sure you leave a like and a comment.